Hey there, travelers! Welcome back to Trav's Cooking Show! This week we're going to be talking about one of Mother Nature's finest recipes. One part duckbill, it lays eggs like a reptile, and it's got the body of a mammal. You mix that all together and BAM! You got this week's animal, the duckbilled platypus. Now, as much of a head scratcher as the platypus is, it's actually a mammal. And it's so confusing of an animal that the first platypus that was brought over from Australia to Britain, people thought they were being tricked and thought that somebody had sewed a duckbill onto a mammal. The reason this animal is so unique is because it had to adapt to the environment it lives in. Platypus only live in one small area of the world. Platypus make their homes in the freshwater areas that flow throughout the island of Tasmania, as well as along the eastern and southeastern coasts of Australia. Now, platypuses are made for the water. In fact, scientists have found that platypus exert 30% less energy while swimming through the water compared to running on the land. They swim with their front feet that act as paddles, and they steer with their tail and with their back feet. They have skin that covers their eyes and their ears, and they have a nose that'll seal shut to protect the animal while it's underwater. That's a pain in Hilton's pool. That's like having a built-in scuba mask. Even though the platypus is made for the water, it still breathes oxygen, and it can really only hold its breath between 30 and 140 seconds. I can do that. Is that dirty? Platypuses are homebodies, and all they want to do after a long, exhausting day of hunting is come home and kick their feet up in their house. A platypus home is a self-made burrow that consists of tunnels and even rooms. Uh, yeah, based off this uh, blueprint, we'll have a tunnel here, tunnel there, a room there, and a room there. And a tunnel connecting the rooms, too. And the big bad wolf would have a really tough time blowing that house down because it's made to withstand a lot of different weather and different climate extremes. Platypus have been found in plateaus, lowlands, tropical rainforests, the cold mountains of Tasmania, and the Australian Alps. Hey, ole, ole. Mate. Their thick waterproof fur keeps them nice and warm in the chilly temperatures, and their big tail holds in extra fat for energy. Ugh. I don't dare eat this last piece of pizza, it'll go straight to my tail. Platypus usually spend their time hunting for food, and a typical hunt can last 10 to 12 hours. They're most active during nighttime and dusk because they're nocturnal. And platypus are carnivores and search for food in the water where they live. Using their sensitive bill, they detect food along the muddy bottoms of the water. The bill of a platypus has a soft texture that feels like suede. It's also very flexible and rubbery. The skin of the bill holds thousands of receptors that help the platypus navigate through the water and detect movement of possible food. When a platypus smells food, it'll scoop it up in its bill, store it in its cheeks, and swim up to the surface. And because they have grinding plates and no teeth, they'll use gravel or dirt that they picked up while on the bottom to crush their food into digestible pieces. Today's pizza comes pre-smashed with either gravel or dirt. Now, while most mammals have live births, something really interesting about the platypus is it's only one of two mammals that lay eggs. A platypus belongs to a primitive species of mammal known as monotremes. They share this trait with only the echidna. Now, another interesting fact about the platypus is that they're venomous. The male platypus has a venomous stinger that's located behind their hind feet, which is connected to a venom-secreting gland. And while the venom may not kill you, you won't forget the day you cross paths with a platypus because the sting comes along with some excruciating pain. And when I was in Australia, we heard stories where the pain could last months or even years. The IUCN currently lists the platypus as least concerned, which is great news. But because they only live in such a small area of the world, it's very important for us to keep pollution out of our freshwater ecosystems. Recycling plastic bottles is a major way that you can help keep pollution out of those platypus mansions. Thanks for checking us out this week, travelers. If you want to learn more about what a platypus looks like or what its ancestors looked like, make sure to check out travstravels.org or visit Visit our Facebook and Twitter page. This week's animal was suggested by Traveler Heather. Heather wrote in at asktravstravels at gmail.com and requested the platypus. Thanks, Heather. If there's any other animals you want to learn more about, make sure to email us at asktravstravels at gmail.com. And as always, keep on traveling. We'll see you next week. Oh yeah, based off this blueprint, we have a uh, room over here connected to a tunnel and another room there. Oh, and over here, another tunnel and a room connected by a tunnel. 
Yep, yep, if you ask me, there's a lot of tunnels here.